So in the chat, we had a number of different uh, sort of topics suggested. So for those of you who are absolute experts at R, GitHub, etc., you may want to just chill out and take an hour off. Um, but for those of you who maybe are a, a bit newer to, to R, um, a bit newer to, to version control with GitHub and tests and things like that, um, it might be useful for, for you to um, kind of watch and maybe hopefully uh, pick some things up. So if I share my screen, what I'm going to, what I've done is put together a very short presentation and we'll go straight into the code. So uh, definitely calling this last minute live coding. Um, and it's always tricky when when presenting uh, live because when you're, when you're working alone, you're quite happy. And then when everyone's watching, obviously uh, everything uh, everything falls to, yeah, falls apart. So what should we cover? So in the in the chat, there are a few different different things mentioned. Uh, so there's some live code topics. So custom functions, Ruxian, documentation, unit tests. Uh, unit tests were mentioned quite a lot in the last uh, couple of, or, or in the in the first two presentations today. Uh, and good documentation. Um, also stopping code becoming like uh, like spaghetti uh, and being really hard for for new um, kind of people that are, that are taking on a project or adapting a model, being able to do that. Uh, so we can we can talk a little bit about that. Um, there are a couple of requests around survival analysis and adding um, sort of event costs and rewards in, into models. They're kind of a bit more topic specific, so I might might avoid those and, and stick more to the, the more generic skills. Uh, and then there were also requests around shiny and and our markdown. Uh, but the one that got the most um, thumbs up, I think, was uh, version control and and sort of interacting with Git Git GitHub in R Studio and working together as a team. Uh, and so that's I think what we'll, what we'll focus on the most. So uh, in particular, this, this one here, and then we'll use some of these live code topics at the top as kind of examples of of um, doing something live, but also interacting with GitHub, uh, Git and GitHub in our studio uh, to to keep track of of versioning while we're working. So first of all, version control is really really hard. Um, you can see see here it's there's a lot of memes online and there's a lot of uh, people that have been burned really bad with with version control uh, but not doing it is much much harder so not doing it well uh, causes all kinds of, of hassle and problems and there's there's a number of different benefits so as well as working together as a team internally there's embedded there's benefits for external reviewers uh, being able to access different things so this is from a presentation with uh, we, we gave to nice um, where we were looking at you know what? What are the benefits of of version control uh, using script-based programming lang languages? And here we've got the example where we have a, a statistician, a modeler, uh, maybe a whole team who have access to to source code and and open data, but also some sensitive data. And then having reviewers who are able to very quickly get a hold of of open source code uh, and data on on, on GitHub, um, and then rerun models and review things um, rapidly uh, is is very valuable. Um, also, being able to make code available open on GitHub means that some reviewers who may not need access to the, the sensitive data can still provide insight uh, and, and information about you know the choice of packages used, um, you know the method supplied, even without necessarily seeing the, the data. They can still provide some insight, uh, and then some other people may want to just be able to see uh, a GUI like Shiny. Um, so they might not need the code. They might not care about the code or the data. They just want to be able to um, uh, treat the model as a black box and, and play around with the, the user interface. Um, but a lot of what's going to allow us to collaborate and work together as as teams is going to be GitHub. Uh, so one of the questions, one of the first questions, uh, was around reviewing existing packages, so packages that other people have created and understanding whether they're safe to use. And so I thought maybe starting with that was good. And then I'll jump into uh, building up sort of collaboration with GitHub and, and, and edit, editing, editing code live. Um, so just to, to build in. So we've got four commonly used uh, packages here. So the use this package is a, a package in R that's, that's often used to help uh, build your own custom package. Uh, Plumber is a, a package that's used for uh, creating uh, APIs. Uh, R Markdown and Shiny you're probably more familiar with. So R Markdown's uh, used for generating uh, semi-automated reports. Um, so reports where you have either code chunks or 
outputs from from the code embedded into a into a written report and then shiny um we've we've talked about quite a lot uh, it's used for building user interfaces which can be deployed online uh, and used to to run you know in our case uh, run your model for different parameter selections so if just looking very quickly so say you know should we be using the our markdown package as an example before we go into some more uh, health economic uh, examples or the shiny package we could go to github before we download this um and we could look for uh, i don't think i've ever actually looked for our markdown um but we could look for shiny for example and try and find that so i'm not going to search in my own one I'm just going to search for shiny and we can see here that we've got all of the source code for the shiny package um so rather than having the source code kind of hidden away somewhere um completely um, unobtainable if we want to we can go and see exactly what's happening with the shiny package at this point in time we can see who's contributed to this package so here we've got a list of contributors 84 of them uh, we can see what issues have been identified with the package so, so here we can we can see things that the people have flagged uh, and many of them um, will then be addressed um, either by the the team that are, are building and, work and maintaining shiny or by other people who just just want to to kind of um, collaborate on an open source project and they would often do that in the form of pull requests and so pull requests are uh, essentially requests that are being made by by somebody who's taking a, a copy of the code base to their own machine made changes to it in some small way and then now they're they're requesting to to pull to um, uh, essentially merge those changes in to the code base that, that exists online um, and so here you'll see that there's there's a kind of quite an extensive list of requests that are being made for people who are suggesting new functionality or um, improving uh, fixing some bug or you know whatever it is and you can see here that um, these are these are by a large number of different people so there's a large number of people collaborating on this and so when reviewing a uh, a package it's often quite useful to think so how how can i be confident that this package is going to do uh, what it says it's doing so we can see here that the release here is shiny 1.8.1 if this was the first release so like 0.0.0.1 0 .0 .0 uh, then maybe you'd be slightly less confident you know something that's just literally just been released that week and no one's really used it yet you might be a little bit less confident on um we can also see how many people have created a fork so how many people have have kind of created a essentially a copy a copy of this um of this software so here we've got 1.9 thousand so that's a, that's a lot of people um adapting and, and reviewing this code uh, which is always a good sign there's a large number of contributors and you can kind of look into who the specific people are so here that those of you that are kind of familiar with shiny will know uh, who winston chang is and so there's a certain amount of of credibility that that is is gleaned just from the the individuals involved. So if you have you know several professors at well known universities, um, that's always a good sign, rather than say one one PhD student. Um, and we can also um, look at obviously the the issues that have been raised. And so one of the things that um, that people ask is so it is a is a large number of issues a good thing or a bad thing. Um, and I'd say in general, if we've got a large number of issues and pull requests and we're quite far into the, the releases, so we're on, you know, quite an established version, that's that's probably a good sign. If there are no issues, no pull requests, um, and you're on version one, then it's it's obviously quite a, a new development package that that maybe hasn't had uh, much engagement. And so it's it's kind of hard to gain confidence about it. But there's definitely a wider discussion to be had about how as a community we we validate some of these these packages so just to maybe put uh nathan and, and john luca on the spot we can uh we can look at the serve he one um and it's incredible that it's um completely open source so we've got all these um all, all this stuff here so we've got here serve he we've got version 2.01 so obviously much more established than, than most of the packages out there um we've got uh multiple people who've been involved with it so we've got six people and many of whom on the call um always kind of uh, doctorates and, and a kind of a reputation to to lose if uh, things go horrifically wrong uh and we can see that 
here. So we've got 10 open issues, 24 closed. So it's it's got a lot of engagement. And you can see that we've got people from, from different institutions here all collaborating together, many of whom you'll, you'll recognize the, the names from. Um, so another good example um, there. So thinking now about um, how we can collaborate, and I promised everyone a live demo, so now I have to deliver. Um, let's say we want to start our own our own project. So if I go to um, GitHub, I'm going to start my own project, and I'm uh, going to have a look at our organization, organization's repository and create a new one. And so uh, I'm going to start a project, and so my first step will be to uh, create a new repository. So a repository in, in GitHub is essentially a way of of um, of, of taking a, a project, essentially a project folder for the project that's going to contain all of our our code, so that we can collaborate with others. Um, so if you can think of it almost a little bit like a a Google Docs folder uh, that we're going to share, so that other people can um, can interact with it as well. So here I'm going to uh, call this uh, R for H E uh, for H T A. Uh, 24 example. So I know to delete it later. And then I'm going to say example for uh, 2024. So I give it a short description of what of what this um uh, what what this pack, um repository relates to. And here I'm going to make it public so that hopefully you can you can all see it. And I'm going to add a readme file. So a readme file um, provides a longer description on the project. So what the project's about, and you can you can provide quite extensive documentation about um, how to kind of engage with the the project, how others can uh, sort of install the necessary packages if it is a package, um, how they can, for example, run the model if it is a model, um, what dependencies it has. So it might you know there might be some data stored somewhere else that someone has to go and um, go and obtain before they can they can run it. Um, but also generally provide a, a structure for and a description of how all the code and data is structured. Um, then you get asked whether you want to add a, a git ignore file. So um, here I'm going to add the git ignore file for the default git ignore file for R. And we can see that when it uh, when it creates it. And here I'm going to make this uh, MIT. So this is a license for for others' use essentially um, to let others know what they can and can't do with. Uh, with the code um, by law, and once we're we're happy with that and you have everything there, uh, we can click create repository. Now, if you've been doing this for a while and creating a lot of these, you can create a, a template. So here we have a number of different templates for different types of project. So it might be that you have a template for a project that relates to Shiny. Uh, so you might have a, a folder where you'd put you know all the the icons and stuff that generally go in your your Shiny app. Or um, if you have a, a modeling template, it might be that you have a certain structure that your uh, organization generally uses for a model. And so then you can create a template that essentially when this um, repository initializes, the folder structure matches that template. But here we'll just, just create an empty one, just as an example. So if I, I create this uh, repository, we can then see it It'll take a few seconds. And then here we go. So now we essentially have this uh, this project directory that's up. Uh, online uh, called a, a, a GitHub repository. And you can see that I've got a, what's called a, a commit, an initial commit here to add these uh, these three files. So I've got a gignore file, a license, and a readme. And so you might want to uh, edit the readme here because this isn't particularly informative. So um, you might want to edit this file and, and say what you intend to do. So quite often we'll have uh, if I go to, we'll have either some information here about uh, an academic paper that the GitHub repository relates to, just to provide some context. Um, and here they might have, say, the the abstract for the paper, just so that people know, you know, this this repository corresponds to this paper, and this is what the paper is doing. Um, and you might have information on. So this is in this example, this repository is a package. So we have information on how do you install that thing, um, and then how do you use it? Like, what do you actually do with it? And then quite often you'll have uh, an, a structure to the, the the information in the repository. So here this describes what each of these folders uh, contains. And these are the, the folders here. So that when you kind of log on to this, you can see, OK, so the R, for, R folder contains the functions that you know this contains this, this contains this. Otherwise, um, uh, people that are kind of new to this might be a bit, a bit lost. So going back here, we might say, um, uh, we are going to create 
our folder uh, a test and then collaborate. Of course, in real life, you're going to write much more extensive um, description than that. And so then here we go. So it's up updated now to say uh, what we're going to, to have in here. And yeah, you'd want much more extensive documentation there. So now I've got this uh, this thing, this GitHub repository, which exists um, online uh, on GitHub, but not on my machine. And so this uh, currently exists within our organization, um, and it's public. So if I share the link in the in the chat, um, you should all now be able to go to this location and see this exact uh, repository as it is. And this is public. Uh, which means any of you can can go and have a look at it, um, but you can't um, make edits to this uh, to the code base. So you can see it. Um, you can do what's called forking it, which means um, taking it, essentially a copy of this over onto your GitHub account, and then you can make edits and submit a pull, what's called a pull request to merge those edits into this version. But you cannot uh, directly change these files without uh, my permission. Uh, as the the owner of this repository, but what I can do is grant people permission to do that. So here, for example, I could uh, I can go to collaborators and teams. Um, I can uh, see that. I can log in uh, and then make sure um, I'm happy with who has access. So here I'm going to add uh, someone. Uh, let's find uh, let's find well. So let's add well. Uh, and I'm going to give him write permission. So there's a number of different types of permission. Uh, so I think by default for a public repository, I think you will essentially have read uh, access so you can see everything, um, but you can't uh, make any changes to the code base. Uh, but I'm going to allow uh, Whale to make changes to the code base. Um, so if I give him access to this repository, so the main ones I use tend to be either give somebody read access, write access, or admin access. Um, those are kind of the, the main three I, I tend to use. Uh, admin access also enables people to delete the repository, um, manage you know others' uh, access, and, and things like that. Um, so they tend to be sort of three main roles: write, uh, read, write, or or admin. Um, and then the other two are, are slight variations on that. Um, so I've now added um, well, so he could he could make uh, edits to the code base if he if he so likes. Um, okay, so now we've done that, uh, we can also look at, at some of the other uh, functionality briefly. So you can manage projects here uh, with a Kanban board. Um, so you can uh, you can create a essentially create a new project here. Let's just show this very quickly, and then you're essentially going to get a Kanban board style visual so that you can see exactly who's working on what, which issues have been addressed, which issues are, are ongoing, and which issue, issues are done. Uh, and you can link that to the the specific uh, kind of issues you're you're addressing at the time. And you can have one of these for each each project you're working on, which is, is very useful. Uh, so let's go back to the repository. OK. So now you want to get started uh, linking this up with, with our studio. So now once I'm, I'm ready, and, and this is kind of a sort of documented, I've given access to the people who need access. I can create a copy of the, the URL for this uh, this code, and then I can go to, to our studio. And so here I'm going to go to uh, the top right corner where we have this um, uh, project uh, summary. Uh, I click on new project, and it will take a few seconds to load up because I'm sharing a screen. And then I'm going to go to version control, git, and paste in this um, this URL. I need to specify where 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 on my machine do I want to put this. So for the purposes of this demo, so I'm going to delete it straight after. I'm just going to put this on the on, on the desktop. Um, but generally, it'd be in some project folder um, for the the client project. And if I click create project, I now have uh, essentially a clone, a, a copy of the materials that were on that um, GitHub repository now on my own personal machine. And so. What's happened is it's copied down those files. You notice on when we we're on uh, GitHub. So if I go back here, I have three files. I have a gitignore.gitignore, a license file, and a readme. If I go to hit my machine now, I have a gitignore, a license file, a readme, and this new file, which is an R project file, which has been created because I've initiated the the project um, up here. So when I when I created the new project, the first thing it does is create an R project file. But this this exists on my machine and not on the remote 
repository, so not on GitHub. Uh, and so now if I want to uh, do what's called push this file to that remote machine, uh, to that remote repository, um, I can do that. Once you've got Git set up on your machine, you'll see in the top right-hand quadrant of our studio, you have a Git tab. So now I can do what's called uh, commit and push uh, to send this file up to GitHub. Um, so uh, our project file. So it's good practice to, to include a message. So every change to the code base that we make is going to have a message. And so it's, it's good practice to say, you make a small change to a model, a very small adaptation. You'd write a short message to say, I've adapted the model in this way, and then everything is fully documented. So if I if I commit this, I can now push up. And so now it's what it's saying here is essentially you've just um, pushed the change that you've made on your local machine up to 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 GitHub. So now when I go to the version on GitHub and refresh, we'll now see this uh, this new file here, the the R project file. So that's great, but there's no been no code um, so far. This is all just uh, set up on uh, on R Studio. Uh, so let's create a uh, an example, let's grab an example file and move it over. So uh, let's take the sick sicker model example. So if I go to uh, where my desktop is, it? so now I have this folder which is the can't remember where I put it. Now R for R for HDA twenty four example. If I paste that in, we now have this file, um, which is a, a state transition model uh, that we use for teaching. Um, from the, the Darth Sixica model. And this is a big long file and we're going to have a load of parameters. Uh, we've got uh, discounting, we've got, well, we created a transition matrix. Um, we're going to check that, that transition matrix, all the rows sum to one. Um, we're going to create a Markov trace. We're going to run our model and then we're going to produce a, a quick, very dirty plot to show where the proportion of the cohort are any given time. Uh, and then we're going to um, estimate cost and qualities and get a set of results and calculate an ISA. And that's all this file does. So it's 167 lines of code that runs a uh, a three state, uh, a four state um, a state transition model and returns an ISA. So that's fine, great. Um, so we've got our essentially our model here, and so I can I can go ahead and and commit this and put this on there. Uh, so this is like a, a first pass. Let's say this is my first attempt uh, as a um, a kind of junior member of the team to to build the model. So let's commit that. And so then we've got our model. I'm going to push, and I'm fine. So this is essentially the same model that we teach on our on our course um, for for Shiny. Uh, so it's already kind of this is already in the public domain. Um, so not sort of sharing anything new, but hopefully it's it's useful for people to see. So if I go uh, here, we'll now see that we have this new file here, stm uh, underscore zero one. And so um, what I'll do is ask Whale to maybe take a quick look at that file and um, make a suggestion, so and create an issue. And one issue I might suggest that he makes is that currently uh, when I build the um, uh, the transition probability matrix, we have a matrix here, and the only test I perform is um, that all the rows sum to, to one, which here I've just added in a quick check that the rows sum to one, but I might want to do some more extensive testing. So um, Whale, as my my boss, as my reviewer, might say, can we add in some more checks and tests here? You know, what if the values are lower than zero or higher than one, but the rows still sums to one? Or what if we've got something weird in here? Uh, let's just check that. That might be the sort of thing that, that somebody might say. And so then... Um, Hopefully, at, at some point, if if Wales not gone for a cup of tea or got too bored at my talking, um, he'll create an issue. <laughs> okay, so how how it's yeah uh, how how it's corrected my my Oxford grammar, which is brilliant, uh, very good. So, for example, yeah, that's a great point. So, how is now created an, an issue? And so, what I might want to do is now go to, back to our studio, uh, and correct this. So, um. Howard said, "Let's let's uh, change uh, the README. So I'm going to copy exactly what Howard's asked for. Uh, I'm going to come over here, um, and I'm going to see. Okay, yeah. So I've not done, I've not written this uh, correctly. So one of the things I can do, because we want to make sure that we are not 
um, making potentially breaking changes to our, our main uh, version of our code. We want to make sure that the trunk of our code, um, our code base remains nice and safe. Uh, so what I'm going to do is create what's called a branch. So I'm going to create an, a copy on my machine uh, of this main branch in a new branch. Then I'm going to make the change and then I'm going to submit a pull request in for somebody to review uh, to make sure it complies with with what you know they're looking uh, to change. Um, because what we don't want is all, to all be working on the same thing like you would do in a in a in a Google Doc, which allows everyone to work live. Um, that's great when you're kind of working collaboratively on text. It's awful for code because obviously one person's change affects other people's code as well. So here I'm going to say. Uh, um, um, so I intended to call my branches rs underscore and then whatever it's for. So I'm going to call it grammar Nazi um, for no particular reason. And so now I've got a new branch and I'm going to copy in Howard's suggestion. And so and save that. And you'll see you'll notice now that we've now got uh, a little M symbol here next to the readme. So that's to let me know that I've I've modified this file, this this readme file. And I'm going to um stage that commit it and say um error in grammar and commit that change close and push and so now this is going to send this up to a new branch of the github repository so when i go come here we can now see that we've got the main branch which remains unchanged so this this sentence here reads exactly as it was before but if i go to the um the new branch i created this now reads correctly okay but now we want now as long as uh the reviewer is happy uh we want to get this change into the main um the main branch of the of the repository so we might and the reason why this is useful is we may for example build the first pass of a model but then we may have a statistician working on one part of the model we may have a health economist working on another we may have somebody documenting things up and so four or five of us could be working simultaneously on the same model and then submit in pull requests to the main branch. And so then by the aim is that by the end of the project, we have a nice tidy finished main branch, but people can be simultaneously working on their own um, their own tasks. So it makes things much more efficient. So we can now compare uh, and submit a pull request for the changes I've made. And generally you'd write a longer description here. Um, so you say, um, um, Uh, I need to write Weller. There we go. Um, okay. So, uh, and you can see exactly the change it made. So you can see the, the version of the code in the main um, branch and the version of code in our, um, our kind of our new branch that we've created and what we're going to overwrite that with. So old is in red, new is in green. And so we can see the exact thing that we changed, just a, a comma here. And so I can create this uh, this pull request and assign a reviewer. Uh, so here I'm going to assign it to to Well to review because um, he's got um, right access. And so one of the first things it's going to do is it's going to say, "Have are there any changes that that are conflicted?" So this can occur if two people uh, make essentially create branches and then make changes to the same line of code, then you can get a com a, a conflict. Um, so this is checking are there any any conflicts with the um, with the other branch. And then once we're happy, so um, Whale well, here agrees with the, the changes. And so we can see his review. He's very quickly said, I agree. And then I can, can merge those changes in. So I'm going to go ahead and merge those changes. And then I can delete the branch. And so now our main version of the code contains this, um, this corrected sentence. So um, we, can, we could have, when we merged that change, we could have um, included uh, a little reference, close, hashtag, issue one. Uh, and then it would have automated the close, so it just automatically removed this um, or, or closed this issue. Um, but because um, I was kind of talking through, I forgot to do that. And so we can manually just click close issue. So everyone's happy, issue closed. Um, in the meantime, while I've been killing some time for for, for Whale to, to make some suggestions based on the code, uh, the model I um, submitted, uh, Whale suggested some some more checks to, to add in. So he said, can we suggest these these probabilities are above zero? And GitHub is really nice because he can uh, you can literally reference specific lines of code, and we can see those lines here. So I can I can click uh, 
here and get taken exactly to the line of code that, that Wales referenced. So he's referenced this line, line 81, um, which is really useful when you've got an extensive code base and you're trying to talk about the code base rather than emailing saying file, um, you know, uh, model A line 153, please could you do this? Uh, you can literally click on the line and say uh, reference the new issue uh, and then reference that as, as Wales just done. Uh, so it makes it much easier for us to to discuss and, and talk together about the about the project. So with that in mind, I would then uh, create a new branch, um, and I have to be careful to go back to the the main branch and create a new branch off of main. Uh, let's let's make sure first of all that I pull before I do everything. Create a new branch, uh, and here I'm going to call this RS uh, more um, more tests more checks just as a, a quick thing to be able to uh, create a branch and very quickly see that this is the branch that I'm working on, so RS, so Whale might call it his, and then kind of a very brief thing so that we know what this branch relates to. So now I'm working on a new branch, so I can make any changes I want here. If I don't like my changes, I can just throw them away and go back to main, uh, which is really, really reassuring. But now I'm going to um, quickly run this code and then make some changes when I get to line 81. So here I've got my initial checks, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, the package that I talked about on Friday to make a quick check uh, of this matrix. So here's what the transition probability matrix looked like, but rather than write a ton of tests here, I'm just going to use the ones that I've already written and included in a package. And you can see that it's uh, done it and it's not flagged any errors. I can get it to confirm that everything's okay rather than just be silent. So it's saying past all checks. And just to make sure, just to show you that it would flag an error if there's a problem, uh, let's randomly change one of the things. So let's change uh, the probability for everything, everybody in the S2 state to be uh, minus 0 0.1. So now if we had this transition probability matrix, you'd probably be thinking, mm, this isn't looking so good. Uh, so hopefully, <laughs> like fingers crossed doing this live, here we go. So it's saying, um, we've got a transition matrix with values um, below zero or above one, and also the rows now don't sum to one. So there's two errors here. One is that we shouldn't have negative values in here, and the other error is that when we sum all the rows, um, they don't sum to one. And that's important that we've got two separate errors, because we could have a negative and then a positive that cancel each other out so that the whole thing sums to one still, and the other check wouldn't have flagged it. Um, and so now I've got this um, this new check in there. I'll get rid of that a little bit. Uh, I don't need the old one, and so uh, I can add that in. And so now I've got a new line of code. So when I come over here uh, and commit, I'll be able to see what have I added versus what have I removed. So I've removed my old check here, row sums, and I've added this new check uh, with this external package uh, just to check that the transition probability matrix complies. And I'm going to say uh, added in assert checker or prob that check commit that push and then if I go back to the repository this one and go look at, at this you can now see that it's flagged to say you know this this branch has changed only eight seconds ago because it's very likely if you just push something that you're going to want to merge that's why it's, it's flagged it's kind of saying do you want to merge this basically and so I can click here and it will take me to the the merge uh, file just going back to the to Wales issue here this is issue number two so if I remember that this is issue number two uh, come back here um, and say, okay, so I want to merge this. Um, I have added in a he more info can be found here. I can add links in, um, I can add pictures, I can add a video, like I can have basically whatever I want to show to justify why I've made this change. Um, and then I can say here, I'm going to say closes number two. And what that means is that when I create this pull request, uh, I'm going to choose where well to review it. So I'm going to create the pull request, and when this pull request is accepted and, and we merge into the main branch, uh, it's going to automatically close that issue. And so what our kind of um, workflow is uh, as a group uh, in Dark Analytics is essentially to, to create a load of issues, a uh, load of things that we need to, to do on a project, and then as we solve each one, we close it. So we kind of gradually see over time, oh, yeah, okay, this is what we need to do, solved. This is what we need to do, solved. Um, and then... Um, uh, and then gradually over time, we kind of work through them. And then when we struggle, we have a big, long discussion down here. And so it might be that 
it might be that I could have mostly solved the problem, but I needed a bit of guidance. And so then Whale could have given me some guidance back and forward on, on this discussion until we'd resolved it. And then once we've resolved it, we can click resolve, brilliant, and then merge, confirm merge, and then everything's uh, done. So yeah, sorry, I'm really winging it to uh, to fill these these two sessions, but hopefully that, that was useful. Uh, if there are any questions, then we could do a couple of minutes of questions and then stop. Sorry, I've not been looking at the chat. Um, but I'm also chairing this session, I realize. <laughs> okay, does anybody have any questions that wants to like speak? So it's not just me, me speaking for 12, 40 minutes. Uh, Hazel, yeah. Hello. Um, just a really simple question. Um, but you very quickly deleted your branch. Um, and I just wondered, would you always do that once it's been okayed? Or would you ever have a reason for keeping them for like a record? Yeah, you can, so you can keep them for a record. And you even if you've deleted them, you can restore them back. Um, oh, right, okay. So, yeah, but the only reason I delete it is that otherwise you just end up with like a huge number of branches. Because if you imagine each one of these changes might be like a couple of hours of work. And if your project is month, a month long or yeah. six months long, you can end up with quite a lot of them. So I tend to, by default, delete them. And then if I need them, I restore them back in. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah. That's useful. Thanks. Cool. Thanks for the nice question.